one main situation today that I see with children, especially black children, they don't really know the difference between they don't know the difference between thinking and feeling. They think what they feel is their thoughts. So, they think with their feelings and they act on it. They buying what they've been sold. So it's on us to teach them the intelligence of their soul. That's why we gotta start education with some sense of God. Creator. Some sense of it. To understand I am a creation. You that's listening to this, you are a creation. We both as creations have a creator. To understand ourselves, we need to understand why the creator created us. What is the creation of our environment? The nature of our environment. The science. What is the function of my breath, my mind, my heart? What is soul? What is spirit? So if all that is in my feelings and not actually on law, history, science, knowledge, wisdom, understanding, if them concepts of how I respond to what I see is only in my feelings, then he. Somebody can control me easily. All they got to do is get me in my feelings. And I... This is why... It's different this time. See... My generation, right? I came up in the 90s. I came out of college in the 2000s. My generation... We had discipline. Even though we didn't get the preparation and the, the knowledge on how to compete in, in the emerging world, we had the discipline to kind of figure it out ourselves. These kids ain't got discipline. They don't, they don't have no sense of togetherness. They don't have that. In addition to that, they're coming up in a time when the technology is... Which is amplified by the internet... So we have this concept of social media. So yes, people saying things on the social media, then when they get in somebody's face and start talking that, then it's a different energy. So I'm just sharing my piece because I worked hard to become a history teacher. And my intent is to become a thought an authority on black history in Atlanta. That's my intent. So my father got his son teaching Georgia history. At first, my intent was just Atlanta. But when I started studying Georgia, I realized, whoa. And Georgia brothers, something special. Dr. King, Elijah Muhammad. We something, eh. Ooh, we, we got some different juice. And it's also important for us to know that. Much love to the rappers that give money, millions, feeding their family. Much love, much respect to your hustle. But rap did not put Atlanta on. Atlanta been on the colleges put Atlanta on the fact that we are the mecca of black colleges on the planet on earth we have the largest concentration of black colleges within a five mile radius that produced Dr. King Maynard Jackson the list listen 
That's why I'm seeking to become an authority on the history of Black Atlanta. So we can be told properly. So our children can understand. Look, if it weren't for Curtis Mayfield, you might not have that outcast sound that you heard. That you might that you call old school. It was the Dungeon family that paved the way for future. That paved the way for Tilt. And before Dungeon Family, we had Royal Peacock. We had music studios. Atlanta had it had it, its own scene. Atlanta been on. Even with Booker T. Washington when he made his speech in Atlanta. Atlanta been on. So that my P for the day, man. I just wanted to show. Little song. Well, and to close out this segment, as far as the whole Will Smith, Chris Rock, I mean, the main thing for, that I picked up was at no time should anybody feel comfortable making a joke about a black woman. If any, especially as a black man, anytime you speak on a black woman, especially in front of his her husband, especially in front of your respected peers, say something uplifting. At and at the same time, at no time should I. How can I say? I gotta understand the difference between the wolf and the sheep, and I shouldn't attack the sheep. Because as sheep, we gonna find out who the wolf is. Then we're going to move a little different, like the nine jewel. Salute from the jewel.